It's been a while since my last response to Zach and Karen B. So in this video, let's get to the last couple responses they have in their video. Let's move on to the fifth proof. So one last thing, which should be obvious, okay. if you pay attention and think about it. If you set a ship straight to the horizon, right. eventually it begins to disappear until it's no longer visible beyond your horizon. Right. Seafarers knew this. Right. And so what, however flat they would have imagined the Earth to be, they, they, couldn't, have, it, they couldn't have accepted it to be completely flat, because otherwise you would never not see the ship. Okay. So ships disappear behind the horizon line. What kind of surface would produce that result? Well, a cylindrical surface makes more sense in this case, Mr. Neil, because the horizon looks flat from right to left. What would happen if that ship turns 90 degrees left or right? You do realize that ships go over the horizon no matter which direction they leave from, right? Whether it's north, south, east, or west, as long as it's going away from you in some capacity, it does indeed disappear beyond the horizon. Well, I guess Rob Skiba has a good explanation for this. Now here's the other issue. People who think ships are disappearing over the curve in three, four, five miles distance, you should have the exact same effect looking left to right on the x-axis. You should be seeing ships rolling up to the top of the ball and rolling down on the lateral x-axis you know i mean if it's a ball it's got to be they got to be rolling both ways away from you and side to side we never see that though and from end to end and this is a lot more than just five miles there's no perceived curvature here none flat as a pancake if we break down this argument what it's actually saying is i can't see no curve it looks flat to me, which is of course a ridiculous argument, but I guess I'm going to have to put this in simple terms and have a, a graphic on the screen so you can understand what I'm saying. So here is a semicircle. Now this demonstration is to scale, so the radius of this semicircle matches the 6,378 kilometer radius of the Earth. Now let's zoom in. Keep zooming. Keep on zooming. Almost. There. The block on the left represents a 6 foot or 183 centimeter tall person, while the box on the right represents a possible width of an oil tanker at 40 meters. This is actually the farthest you can zoom in on this program, and I had problems pulling this off. Granted, Inkscape probably wasn't the best program to do this with, but it's what I had, and I'm only going to do this once, so who cares? Point is, Earth is so goddamn big that it looks flat from this perspective. I mean, technically it's not, because the edges of the screen are, indeed, lower than the center, but not enough to move even a single pixel. Not enough to move a single pixel for a long distance. And definitely not enough to see with the naked eye or with a telescope or anything for that matter, because that's only going to make it worse. That's only going to zoom in farther. It's not going to help you see more of the surface. This is why you can't see the curve from the ground. It's also why you can't see the curve from the uh, mountaintop. It's also why you can't hardly see the curve from a passenger flight. You have to get to high altitude in order to clearly see the curve. At which point, you will claim that everything is fake because a huge, multinational, millennia-long conspiracy is more reasonable to you. Oh, and by the way, if you're waiting for the image that I clickbaited you with in the title of this video, that, that wasn't it. Don't worry, we're getting to it. To better illustrate this, I created this little animation right here. And this represents you know, about a mile uh, worth of ocean. Now that's on flat water. You know, no waves at all. Now let's look at this same animation. I created some waves. The, the wave height was about as high as the camera, which was you know, just a little bit above the water. Okay, so let's look at the same exact animation, this time with some waves. Okay, there's wave, 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 wave. Okay, over the distance here, the cumulative effect of the waves obscures the hull of ships. 
you end up with the illusion of ships rolling over the ball when it's, it has nothing to do with that at all. This is a flat plane. You know, here's the two pictures side by side with flat water with no waves and then with waves. That's interesting. That's really interesting. But I'm kind of curious, what exactly would this look like if it was on relatively still water and the camera was way higher than the waves, say, I don't know, 20 feet or 6 meters above sea level? And what if we zoomed in on ships that were just at the horizon? I don't know. Maybe we'll never know. Oh wait, yes we do, because that's exactly what Andy Hall did on CivilWarTalk.com. Uh, take a look at this image. Or this one. Are you telling me that these tiny waves are what obscures the other tankers, which are clearly below the level of the one in the foreground? It's obvious that your example mostly relies on this one convenient wave to cover up the others, but that's not what we would see in the real world. These images from Andy Hall are some of my favorites because they so easily and so thoroughly debunk all of the ridiculous flat earth claims about ships going over the horizon. I mean, it's zoomed in, so it's not like we just can't see it with the naked eye. It's way high above the waves and, well, ships going over the horizon. And the forum thread which these images were posted on is talking about this phenomenon. And, well, this was a phenomenon that's been known for ages. And by the way, that was the image that I mentioned in the title of this video. You waited this long for me to tell you, but it was worth it, wasn't it? YouTuber got you good by the thing in the title only being halfway through the video. But you know what? You watched it, and you love his content and his enthralling personality. So maybe I'm worth subscribing to? No? Fine. Not to mention that if that ship stops where you can't see it anymore and wait until the weather clears up, you will be able to see it again. Yeah, the weather in this image is just fine, thank you. The ship is still going over the horizon. You make planes fly around the entire Earth to reach their destination when there's a very easy shortcut that everyone will enjoy, even the passengers. But there is no plane that does that. Why? I thought we were on a globe. Well, there are actually several reasons which don't take very long at all to look up and find out, but I mean, at least I'm glad to have an easy answer to these questions for once. So, one reason is that there are no airports in Antarctica. That means no pit stops, no refueling, and more importantly, nowhere to perform an emergency landing which is a big deal and is actually required what with safety standards and whatnot. A reason number two is because of wind. In the polar regions, there's a lot of wind, mostly because of air pressure, and I shouldn't have to explain why that's bad for an airplane. And the wind is actually going in a direction that wouldn't make sense on a flat earth, but I digress. The wind also can kick up quite a lot of snow, which means absolutely no visibility for the pilot, which is also a pretty bad thing. And a third reason is that it's difficult to navigate. I mean, think about it, that close to the pole, pretty much every direction is north. I mean, look up the Mount Erebus disaster. That's why we don't do it. Are you afraid the pilots will get dizzy? Or is it too cold up there? Or is there something hidden there that you don't want us to know about? Yeah, right, that's why. Despite the fact that the most advanced scientific nations have been giving proof of the spherical Earth since a thousand years before Antarctica was even discovered, that's why. That's why. There's a huge, millennia-long, uh, multinational conspiracy involving every government, every navigator, every pro and amateur astronomer, all to keep something in Antarctica, the hardest place to put and keep anything at all. And all that's easier and cheaper than any other option, like sending troops to Antarctica to protect the perimeter without having to lie about it, or, I don't know, putting it somewhere else, like a military base, where they can protect it much more easily. That, no, but they, they have something in Antarctica they're protecting, and they're doing that by making us think that the world is round. You know, with this flat earth stuff, I've often made jokes about whatever it is they're hiding in Antarctica. 
I didn't think anyone actually thought that, though. Never overestimate the internet, I guess.